Good morning, everyone. I want to introduce you, uh, welcome you to this session on Beat the Bot, showing students they can outperform LLMs. I'm happy to introduce uh, Naomi Goddess, and she will um, introduce herself. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and preface that question with the Q and a colon, and we will monitor that we will have some time at the end of this session uh, for you to ask any questions of Naomi. And I will um, remind you again to keep yourself muted and um, engage in the chat. Naomi, it's all yours. All right, uh, as you mentioned, I'm Dr. Naomi Goddess. I'm an assistant professor of English here at Frostburg State University. I'm also a native of Minnesota, which has the highest rate of speech in the United States. So I am sorry if I go quickly through my time here. Um, thank you for doing that activating prior knowledge slide. Uh, just a fun way to use Mentimeter, but also I like to run my presentations a lot like I do my classes um, and trying to use best practices. Um, so I am going to focus my screen here. I developed this Beat the Bot um, class theme for my English 101 composition courses uh, in January of last year. It was the first semester when um, these AI tools are really becoming available to students and students were, were aware of them and, and using them. And I thought about how could I use these tools to help me solve some of the problems that I had in my classes. First, I needed a place for students to practice low stakes places for them to practice, not when they're turning something in for an assessment, but in class writing to really work on skills that we want them to develop. Um, I had students using these large language models without a lot of reflective um, thought about how they were doing them. So I wanted them to, to know a little bit more about these tools and to really see what they could output and what it would take to do well with them. I knew that I needed more examples and I always ask for students for permission to use their examples at the end of a semester, uh, but I don't like beating up on student examples in class. Um, I like like to use them for good examples, but I, I thought maybe AI could, could produce some examples for us to, to look at what the deficiencies were. And then I noticed after COVID-19 that my students were not uh, doing as well working in groups and social activities together. So I thought, how, how can I use AI to help me with all of these problems that I had? So I mixed them with uh, best practices in my field. I knew I wanted them to have more practice in low stakes assessment. I knew that was going to require active learning. I wanted more examples. I needed I need guided practice. I have professional examples. I have student examples. I can use AI generated examples to have us look at and to practice with. And then I thought, okay, more social learning. If they're not very good at group work, then we need to practice that and talk about it and do more of it. So by running these problems through the best practices in my field, I came up with this set of solutions. I was already teaching a flipped class, so I was going to continue doing that. I sent home short lecture videos with embedded quiz questions in them. Um, um, I'm going to do weekly instruction in AI. Uh, we're going to talk about it at least once a week. Um, what does AI writing look like? How can we do better? Um, at least touch on that. Um, and I was going to use three sets of examples for students to look at when they're trying to generate their own writing. And I was going to do a lot of pair writing in this class. And so what what this ended up looking like, and I'm going to drag over here, is um, a, a tool called Padlet. And one of my courses this semester has graciously allowed me, every single student gave me consent to share this with you, even knowing that this was going to be recorded. Um, except for I have some blurred out here. I wasn't able to contact one of my students. So um, that's what we have here. And this Padlet is a recording of all of the low stakes in class writing activities and practice that we've done so far this semester. Um, and hopefully you all can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. Um, and, and where we start is with a narrative. So I'm going to zoom in here um, to the narrative. And this is, I asked ChatGPT to generate a narrative back then, back in January, just to see, like, could I run the class this way? What would it give me? And I'm going to read for you just a little bit in case you're on a handheld device or something with a really small screen. Uh, so bear with me. The, just the first paragraph and couple sentences of this narrative, it's a community narrative about a problem. It's directly from the prompt that's in my assignment sheet. So I gave Chappie my prompt, and this is what it gave me. It said, I live in a small town located in the rural area. Our community faces many challenges, but one of the most pressing issues is the lack of access to healthcare. The nearest hospital is over an hour's drive away, and many residents do not have the means to travel that far for medical treatment. One day, my neighbor, an elderly lady, fell ill and was unable to get to the hospital. 
She was in critical condition and needed immediate medical attention. I knew that if she did not get help soon, she could die. This incident made me realize a community desperate needed a healthcare solution. So, determined to help my neighbor and other residents in the same situation, I quickly rallied the community and organized a meeting to discuss the healthcare crisis. So hopefully you are chuckling behind the abyss of your screens um, right now. It takes my students a little bit of time to figure out, okay, what is wrong with this story? And the problem is, it's very vague and very general, but the problem is, what has happened to your neighbor? If the inciting event in your story is, my neighbor is desperately ill and she's gonna die, then the rest of the plot of your story to follow through should be, okay, how are you gonna get her the care that you need or how didn't you get her the care that you would need, that she needs um, and how did that resolve, right? That's the tension in the story. And so they realize um, what I tell them, you know, this is a statistical probability generator. That's what these AI tools are. You tell it to write a fairy tale, uh, you tell it what's the first word, once, what's the next we're going to be upon, right? That's statistically most likely sequence of words, but it doesn't have kind of that greater overview in that that nebula of um, of probabilities that it's selecting from with a little bit of variance to really look at the big picture of what would make sense for a plot. So that's a very easy way with the first assignment that we use in our English 101 curriculum for students to see, aha, if I'm going to use AI writing, that I have to be careful and I have to think about it, and we can do better. So. Um, after we talk about different parts of the plot, I have them go through and I assign, we, we agree on some details like the name of the, little, the old lady, like the um, place where the narrative is set and the ailment. It almost always ends up being a um, broken hip. So that's just the way that it is. So, and then I would assign each group, like a, a pair, um, a element of the plot. So here was our first in group activity here in orange and black. Um, one group got assigned the exposition. We had two inciting events, two rising actions, two climaxes, two following actions, and two denouements. And so we would write in class the story that would do better than the chat GPT story based on having a better plot, because that's the skill that we were practicing. And um, I would wait, I can moderate this Padlet system. So I would wait until both inciting events were done before they both posted, for example. And at the end of class, I ask students to read through what everyone has written and then to vote on which ones they like the best. And they end up voting on the ones that are the stronger story elements because they're excellent connoisseurs of story. Um, and you can see here, there's these ratings at the bottom um, and the ones that are at orange are the ones that won and a little bit of competition in the class that they really enjoy um, and move forward as our class story. So as the unit progresses and we talk about what makes narratives interesting, we would revise. So after lessons on description, for example, then we have this in the red and the black where we've added, um, you can see here, they've added dialogue. Um, they've added, you know, description of, of Gretchen's hip injury, um, that she was in pain. I think my favorite one here is she, we took her to the hospital in a Toyota pickup truck and she was dropped off on the pavement like a potato bag. <laughs> but it's, it's wild, but it's descriptive and it's fun. And again, through this process, students um, get assigned a different section. They go through, we vote on the ones that they like best. And it's really fun. They end up doing good work and they're practicing the skills that I want them to practice in the social environment that I want them to do in a social environment. Um, and in case you were thinking this is only okay for creative works, uh, to this assignment, I would usually add an overview of the community and overview of the problem in a nonfiction setting. So um, I asked ChatGPT to write me an overview of this community. It's very bland. It's very general. It doesn't include any citations or statistics or anything. Um, so we, we would I brought that to class on that day and we talked about it and uh, had students, some students groups wrote overviews of the community. And you can see they have statistics, they have in-text citations. And in this case, instead of rating them as the instructor, I went through and I just kind of, I call it green lighting, green lit the ones that did the best job of the thing that we were practicing that day, which is supporting your claims with evidence and citing your evidence. And the same thing, um, overview of the problem here at the bottom. And so this mimics, this structure on our Padlet, mimics the structure of that um, assignment that I was going to give them, the formal assignment that they're going to write on their own. Overview of the community section, the narrative, an overview of the problem section. And so they can come always to look at this Padlet to see, okay, what has AI done on this topic? What did we do that was better? Um, and how did we do better? Uh, I have added to this assignment. Uh, I started, like I said, January of um, last year, 
mostly on the narrative. Um, we have a research unit that comes after the narrative unit. And here I have, um, uh, we spend some time looking at a research article in class, taking it apart, understanding the experiments in it, you know, analyzing it. And then I asked, I put, copied and pasted the whole text of the article into ChatGPT and asked it to produce a summary. And it did. And so I brought this to class and I said, okay, let's look through this summary. How does it how does it adhere to the guidelines that we've talked about and discussed to make a good summary and how doesn't it? And then they would, in class, they would write, again, with their partners, <coughs> strong summaries. And the ones that are greenlit here are the ones that did the things that I asked them to do in our lessons in our study of summaries. Um, Excuse me. So, and then uh, I have also done the same with introductions. This was inspired by March Madness. I assigned each group a different um, type of audience to try to appeal to here. So there's the people of Santa Fe, politicians of Santa Fe, healthcare workers, insurance companies, and we ran kind of a, a bracket tournament here. So one from each group moved forward and then they competed against each other. You can see here with a rating of uh, four and a half stars, this appeal to the politicians of Santa Fe to care about this problem, to introduce our research essays is the one that won. And the final thing that I added just this semester was a competition among citation bots. I don't know if these are the bane of your writing existence, um, but I had two sources, one a journal article and one a, um, a web article. And I randomly assigned different groups for each round um, different tools to generate citations. And we went through and we talked about, okay, what's correct? What's incorrect? Which one did the best in this class? My bib won, even over the poor group that got ass assigned Purdue OWL <laughs> for both of these. Um, and they, uh, they learned that you can't just blindly trust these tools. You have to use them intelligently, which is kind of the whole theme of the Beat the Bot class. These tools exist Yes, they can generate these things. Yes, they do some things better than we do. They have excellent grammar. They tend to organize well. But we also know how to do things better than they do. Um, and we need to be able to use those tools intelligently. So that's the that's an overview of the activities that I use in this class. Were the citations accurate or these made up facts? Um, the ones that I have from ChatGPT did not have any citations. I asked it to add citations to one because I um, brought in our, some of our stuff that we worked on as a class for a peer review. And then I finished the paper with um, ChatGPT 3.5 and I asked it to add citations and they were made up, which made for a great point during peer review practice day about checking sources. Um, let's see. And then I wanted to show you just um, one quick kind of overview of how this would look in a, in a unit. So I mentioned I run a flipped class. In this case, I might send them home on Friday with a video. This is a video of um, how you do plot uh, and what the elements of a plot are and how plot looks like in a story that we're all familiar with. Then they would come in on Monday and we'd look at a professional example from a, a writer, a published example of a moment of someone talking about their community in a way that demonstrates a plot arc. And we read through it in class because I want them to read in class and know that they're reading, right? And we discuss it in class. Um, I would send them home on Monday. Now that you've seen someone do this, brainstorm a time that you could think of um, that, you are, that you could write about in this, in this way. On Wednesday, I'd bring in the narrative from the AI that we would critique and that we'd practice trying to do better then. On Wednesday uh, for homework, I might send them in home with a reinforcing video. And then by Friday, so I've, they're turning their, their brainstormings on Wednesday. By Friday, I've had time to check through and kind of see whose topics are probably going to work, who might need to revise those a little and they have that feedback from me, they're ready to begin an in-class writing session. So it's this guided practice kind of scaffolded um, method throughout. And that is, and concludes, moderator, my presentation for you. So I will try to answer some questions um, as, they, as they have here. How do you think this assignment will change as LLMs improves in some case rather dramatically? I do think it will change um, to a point of being more reflective um, how, what skills would you need to be where the AI is, right? I'm teaching, teaching English 101, and I think about these AI tools like I think about calculators in third grade classrooms. Um, I, you can't take calculators away from students that are going to have them in the educational journey, but I do want you to know that when you add 
the numbers to try to figure out how many boys and girls to invite to so-and-so's birthday party, and you get the result of 303 to know that that's not reasonable, right? Uh, so that if you have, uh, you know, mental math acuity, you need to be able to, to have that. And I want them to have like writing and ideas acuity so that they can see what's reasonable or not about the AI outputs. And I think eventually as the AIs do get better, it'll be more of a, um, let's look at what it did and let's discuss what we can do and compare kind of how we need to develop our school skills to make sure that we understand what we're doing and we can understand what we want um, the AI to do or how to improve it. Um, this is a great assignment. Did you find that having everyone's assignment visible and having some ranked over others discouraged students whose time were certain? I found more, I, we do more of a celebration, I suppose, um, as far as the ones that did well and, and having fun with it. I haven't had students be really disappointed um, and they're all anonymous. Right. So even when I did, like we did celebrate the students who did a great job or who did well, uh, sometimes no one, I sometimes like, does anyone want to take credit for that? And sometimes no one does. <laughs> so uh, I haven't, I haven't had that. And I have never had a student refuse to participate. Um, they really seem to get into it because it is so low stakes, I think. And I think even the fact that they were willing to give me permission to share their work with you all today is a testament to how they feel about writing in our classroom and how safe that feels for them. Naomi, there was a question from Sarah Felber about um, students coming to the conclusion about AI produced content um, and how it needs more staged instructions and feedback. Did the students come to that conclusion? I haven't been that brave yet, to be very honest, about um, letting them go on to ChatGPT by themselves. I have um, I have been bringing the examples to them. Uh, I think in my, I have a 300 level class where we do um, a genre media project, very similar to what James Lang was talking about at the end of his. Um, and I think that's gonna be a, a place where maybe we'll do a media project on our own. And then we're gonna ask an AI tool to do the same thing later like they're not going to know that until afterwards that we're going to ask an AI tool to try to do the same thing and then talk about how to get those tools to generate something that would be better in my case with that narrative that was after I asked ChatGPT to make the narrative more about the old lady and the response from ChatGPT was to add one sentence at the end about her living um, and so I would have to go through the prompts and be like I need you to make the second paragraph more like this I need you to do this with the climax etc cetera, etc cetera. Are you saying that when you ask for citations, AI makes them up? Yes, it hallucinated it. Um, when I asked them, when I asked it to produce like the back half of our research paper. So we had done the front half together as a class and I could pull that off the Padlet and put it in MLA format. And then I asked AI to do the back half of it and brought that to peer review, the whole thing. Um, it made up sources. And I, I actually asked and made it, has, part of my peer reviews now are to go through and check your classmates' sources to make sure they actually exist. Um, and sometimes it would have real authors and sometimes it would have real titles and sometimes it had real journal articles, um, but but never the right page numbers or mix of content and title and, and all of this. I think Gemini, I've heard Google does a little bit better at this because Google's better trained at pulling out snippets, but I haven't investigated that um, significantly. Does this translate into the writing? Do you see that they are avoiding ChatGPT? I would say that I feel like I've had less than some of my colleagues maybe have dealt with, but because Grammarly now has uh, AI functions integrated, it's it's um it's almost hard to prevent entirely. But I think maybe they're avoiding it when they know it's important, like using sources and supporting their claims, and especially in their narratives. Um, it was very easy to spot the couple of narratives that were GPT written because they didn't do the things that we had talked about in class. In the example, um, so when I asked ChatGPT to do this, I didn't give it um, Santa Fe. So my students, they decided what it gave me was 
and I can bring you up here, the most bland and vague of, I said, now give me an overview of the community that you mentioned in the story, because that's what I asked my students to do. So I'm using the same prompt. And it was, it said the community is a small rural town located in an unspecified region, which is really funny, right? Like when I read this in class, it's funny. Um, and we talk about, you know, why that's so vague and and how you'd have to fix it. So you would have to prompt, you know, ChatGPT to do the Santa Fe things. I've asked it something about, well, I think the last time I checked this was like a small city in Germany, like Schweikheim, and it pointed me to a, a city website that didn't exist. But that's the last that I've tried with that. Well, Naomi, we have come up against our time. I want to thank you for this wonderful presentation. Um, as you can see in the, the comments, a lot of a lot of favorable response, and I think people are going to take your ideas and translate them into their discipline. Uh, I do want to remind everyone that our next session will start in 10 minutes. Uh, please consult your program. If you're not sure where to go, you can, um, or what breakout room to go to, you can go back to the main room.